We're back with Rick Blangiardi, Senior Vice President and General Manager of KGMB9. Pursuing your passion, you know, a lot of people would say passion was football, but it seems like that was then. Is it still your passion? And do you have a passion also for TV now? Passion. You know, it's such a strong word, and I talk a lot about that, you know, and, and, and having to have passion and for people and looking for that quality in people, people we ask to come work with us. You know, I look for authentic and passionate people with good skill sets. It gets pretty scary when you start getting a lot of that around you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about a lot of things. I, I, uh, I mean, I'm clearly passionate about my work uh, and the people especially. I'm probably more passionate about the people I'm working with than the work itself, if you will. Um, uh, and I might sound a little bit strange, but that's, you know, that's one of the things in my role where I really interact a lot with the people. There are people in this building who actually do more TV, you know? Um, so from that standpoint, I'm passionate about, about, about my work in a broad sense, certainly passionate about people close to me. Um, you know, as I said earlier, my, my, my children, I've got an incredible woman in my life now, a lady in my life. Um, and, I'm, and I'm passionate about a lot of other things. I, I mean, uh, I, I have strong feelings on, 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 on certain issues, social issues, and things that, you know, that I, as long as I can while I'm here, if we can make a difference in the areas that I can devote some time and energy, I'm passionate about those things. Can you share a story about when passion is taking you through something maybe you didn't think was possible or oh. where the passion is the thing that you know carries well, you. Well, passion, okay, I, I, I will tell you this, coming back home and having the responsibility, unique responsibility of operating two television stations simultaneously, both of which were in difficult states for one reason or another and trying to move them both on parallel tracks all the while being excited having to pinch myself that I was back in Hawaii, yet at the same time having these incredibly long demanding days, either one of them was a full-time effort that, um, yeah, you had to, I, loving the job and loving where I was waking up in the morning and being back home and trying to make a difference and caught up with that, and trying to make these good stations to work in and also keep making a good contribution back to the market and working on improving the quality of our news operation and who got to do do that and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think most recently, the last five years have sort of been all about that, you know? It's been a really strong feeling of, of being home and wanting to do well just because it was the responsibility and the challenge I was, I was fortunate enough to be given. You're so busy at that time running two stations, trying to get them um, to be successful. Yet you said when you came home to Hawaii, it was so easy. It wasn't a question. You wanted to give back. You wanted to make Hawaii a better place. You're busy, but you want to give back. Could you share a little bit more about that perspective and how we as busy people should be able to feel the same sure. way? Sure. Well, I mean, look. <laughs> I, I, I know other people who have sat in this chair, and I don't claim to be any busier than them, and lots and lots of busy people, you know. Um, and I, I think it, it goes back to saying, you know, how much do you have inside? How much can you give? What can you do? How, if you're really pushing yourself, if you're really expecting a lot from yourself, understanding um, that, you know, that, that, that it has to come from within. I mean, I, I, and so then it's just, that and then looking at the things you, that, that interest you, you know? But I mean, it really is about just wanting to put it all out there, you know? Don't leave anything. We used to say years ago when I was coaching to the kids, you know, before the game, we'd tell them, you know, hey, you know, what, what, you, what, you, what you give out there tonight is what you're gonna keep. And what you save will be what you lose, okay? It's about giving it, giving it all. And I've really always believed in that. Um, and, but I try to make sure that I at least do it in places that are purposeful and, and for the right reasons and, the, and hopefully the right things. Can you tell us about either when you were a coach or as a player when giving it your all made the most difference? Well, there, there, there were you know, a number of times both playing and coaching and even observing the game in the, in the game of football where I've had witness to some incredible incredible, you know, efforts, you know, where just everybody was just drained after the game, you know. Um, play by play. Play yeah, by play, play by play. I think one of the, 
you know, and I have the game ball in my office. It was a gift to me from Coach Price when I left coaching. So it was his most cherished possession between the two of us. And I had actually had the copy of I actually had the game ball too at the day of the game and cut it up that night. Actually cut the game ball up and gave each person a piece of it. But the day that we upset the University of Washington in Seattle, 10 to 7, uh, on an opening day in what was then the old Pac-8, uh, I think back about and there have been some great upsets over the years at the University of Hawaii, but for me in my tenure as a player coach, that one was incredible because we were supposed to lose by some 50 points, playing an extremely formidable opponent on their turf. We are supposed to be the classic opening day warm-up game for a team that I think was supposed to head to the Rose Bowl that year, um, back in the old days when the Pac-10 played every year, and beating them was incredible because of the way the game unfolded. It was so physical, and the goal line stands, and the fact that just people rose to the occasion that day and uh, did things that, um, you know, were high water marks all the way around. And I think as coaches, we felt the same way. So I, I, I remember that. I keep that ball around me um, because it was a great symbol of my time in coaching, but also a strong reminder that no matter how much of an underdog you may be in a given situation, that you can overcome that. And I always try to remember that because, you know, you're not always the front runner. And a lot of times it's about coming from behind. It's what it takes to do that. And so for me, I kind of like have that as around. Were you guys winning right off the bat? Uh, we opened up, yeah. We scored, um, we, we scored first, if I remember. Then they tied it up in a way where Reinhold Stuprich kicked the field goal. Um, but um, uh, it was just an incredible game because they were so determined to run it down our throat and they weren't able to do it. Thanks for joining us today on Greater Good Radio. For more information or a transcript of today's show, please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. This is your host, Evan Leong and Carrie Leong, saying please join us next time for another episode of Greater Good Radio Hawaii.